Hey everybody, Mike Iconelli out here in the shop with a very good friend, Brian the Carpenter. You know him from Ike Live. Uh, Brian, I'm excited because we're going to let people in on a little secret modification. That's right. We've been doing it for years. Yes, we have. But now, you, do you feel bad that we're going to let everybody know about nah, this? Nah, nah. We, we teased it before, but this, right. this is a good one. This, I like this one. This is a really good one. Um, we're going to show you some tips for modifying shad wraps, especially bigger shad wraps. And these are waiting techniques, real easy to do. I mean, you don't need a, a freaking mechanics workshop. You can do it in your garage. You can do it in your basement. Really easy tools we're using here, Brian, right? That's nothing, right. Yep. Nothing crazy. Yep. Uh, and we're going to show you how to weight these things. You know, we weight everyone all the way from a little itsy bitsy number five, number five. all the way up to the giant, the big number nine. Um, but today we've got a couple that we're going to play with, Brian. What do we got? Sevens and eights. We got sevens and eights. Okay. Um, I think we even I think we even show what we do with the five. Okay. But um, yeah. Yeah. So we've got a shad wrap. It's a balsa bait. A lot of wood, a lot of buoyancy. And um, this takes us back to when we were, I don't know, early 20s, maybe even before that, watching uh, Fritz. Was it right? Fritz? Oh, yeah. Fritz waiting his pose crankbaits, talking about going out in the shop with a drill press, drilling them, yeah. putting lead, pouring lead weights in there. Um, we're not going to pour any lead. We're not set up to do that, but, and I know a lot of guys aren't. So we've got some pretty we'll cool modifications, yes. stuff you guys have in your tackle boxes. We have some lead neko weights and uh nico and some tungsten drop shot weights yeah yeah and tungsten's a little bit hard to work with but dense very dense a lot of weight to a small area yeah and it gets it done yes yeah, i mean this is all stuff that you can you can get on tw tackle warehouse vmc nico weights vmc nico. drop shot weights real easy stuff nothing complicated here that's right um but before we start drilling right. and adding weight right we're gonna change something real easy. Talk right. about that first, because this is a real easy part of this modification. First thing I do is upsize the hooks. Upsize the hooks. And I'm gonna show you something right now that really shows you how much upsizing the hooks, just the hooks, how much weight that adds. Yeah. These are factory hooks. Factory hooks on a number seven, right? Fours. Yep. And they're two number fours. Two number yep. fours. And we've already gone and put the uh, number twos on there. Yep, right? so we're going two sizes up. Yep. Now these are both still going to float, but I'm going to take a little bit of weight here just to give you an example. It's a little bit of broken off Nico weight. It's about a sixteenth of an ounce, I believe. How, how heavy is. Yep, sixteenth. Yep, we've got sixteenths and eighths. That's a sixteenth. Okay, so this yep. is a half a sixteenth. This is a thirty second. Yep. Broken half. So it's roughly a thirty second of an ounce. I'm going to pop that in there. This is with factory hooks it should be super buoyant with that 16th super buoyant still super buoyant right I'm gonna take that same weight okay. just number seven same bet same boss of bait and I'm gonna clip it in there now this one's got the bigger hooks with the weight still buoyant look at that but starts to slow it down yeah starts to slow it down so that's just from upsizing the hooks upsizing the hooks is the first part of this process. And generally I like to go one or two sizes bigger, depending on what you could fit on the plug. Uh, right now, Brian said we're using, these are number eight shad wraps, and we're upgrading to size two. And you can use a traditional round bend, or especially if you have the short shank round bends, uh, VMC hybrid short shank, trebles it's another great one to add because you can get bigger but they don't tangle with with each other they so, don't get handcuffed yeah and for me i throw a shad wrap when it's cold super cold yeah. you want as much for me i try to get as much hook as i can without them getting handcuffed yeah. number and they're right there they're perfect. not they're not getting handcuffed maybe one out of 20 casts it, it might but um anyhow we'll go ahead and put this in the place okay so we're upgrading our trebles first and now's the part I know you're waiting for. Uh, the thing that blows me away about this, I'm excited for you guys to learn this, is this doesn't have to be this complicated process, man. Um, Brian's a carpenter, I'm not, and I could still do this thing. And it's real easy to do at home with simple materials, uh, a drill, these weights, and it's gonna be a process of trying, right? We're gonna get yeah. through a little trial and error. Yep. And let me forewarn everybody that it's okay to mess up. If you've got uh, four or five shad wraps, 
you might mess one up, it's okay. But the three or four that you get right, that slow rise or neutral buoyancy or slow sink is gonna be so key in the movements of that bait, especially in cold water. Yep. All right, Bryce, so what do we got first? So I've got a Jorgensen clamp here, old school wood clamp, holds it straight. We actually happen to have a drill press here, which is awesome. I know we did this a few years you ago. Could still, you could do it with a hand drill, it, right? We did it by hand, just keeping it straight. So we're gonna go head up here. Now talk a little bit about the location, Brian, because that's important. I know over the years we've played with locations. Um, halfway between the hook hanger and the bill, that's, three quarters of the way. That's right, that's what okay. we're shooting for. Talk about drill bit size. What's the drill bit size, an eighth? Mm, that is... 964. 964. And basically, that's just about the size of the weight that we're going to use, the size in the bit to about the weight we're going to use. Okay. So she fits in there. And the throat is really key for everybody watching right now. Um, when you're weighting shad wraps like this, you want to weight them in the throat. All right, she's fitting in there. Mm hmm. Gonna get ahead. Watch your eyes, folks at home. Tungsten's very hard, very brittle. Yeah, you definitely want to wear some safety goggles or glasses. You notice Brian isn't. That's right. Never give up. There she goes. That's how men do things. There she goes. So we've cut this. We've cut this piece of tungsten down. We've got our hole drilled. That's right. Okay, and we've tank tested this thing. Do you want to see if it is it? It's a little fast or is it slow? Let's look at it again. Let's take a look. Because you keep, you want it, you want to trim? Try it, trim, try it, right? All right, so let's see what we've got. Ooh, whoa. Look at that thing. Mm. Bait falls much slower, but it's still what I would call slow sink. That's right. We want to get this thing to be more of a neutral, right? Let's lighten her up a little okay. bit. Okay, so we're going to lighten it up. So you can keep trimming with the side cutters. Or you could use a grinder, right? We use a grinder a lot. It's feeling right, folks. It's feeling right. It's feeling right. Go ahead, girl. That's okay. That's all right. Because now remember, look at this. Very, very slow rise. Okay, we trimmed it. So now, look at, look at this. Look at this. Almost neutral buoyancy. I'll show you one more time. Watch this face. Look at it. Look at it. Almost neutral buoyancy. But there's one piece of this left, Fry. What else still has to go on here? Epoxy. Epoxy. Yep. So we want to get this bait to just barely float. And now we're going to seal it with epoxy. And add some more weight into it. And that's epoxy is going to add a little weight. So let's get to this final step. We'll tap that weight in there. Let's get that weight down. Yeah. There's enough room for a nice. Nice okay. little bit of epoxy on All that. Right. Got that weight down there. You like to dry the throat off. I'm gonna use a little uh, epoxy. This is a Loctite. This is a little two-part instant mix. Gonna get that on there, Bri. We're gonna fill that gap up, correct? Yeah. Seal it so, uh, so the bait doesn't get waterlogged. Here she comes. Oh! Ooh. Little overspray, bro. I got this. Got a little epoxy on there. I'm gonna wait a second. We're gonna let this thing dry. When we come back, we're gonna tank test it one last time, and you're gonna see some unbelievable neutral buoyancy number eight shad wrap. Come Pow! On. Come on, let's watch. Woo! All right, mad scientist Brian the Carpenter out here in the shop. This project's almost complete. Uh, we started by changing the hooks. We uh, got an eighth ounce VMC tungsten pencil weight. We tank tested it. We kept nipping it down until we got it close. We used the drill press, Brian the Carpenter, right between the front hook hanger and the bill. We put that thing in there. We kept getting it close, close. Finally, we got it to where we want it, to where it barely would float. The last part was the epoxy. Now the epoxy's dry. Right, this is the moment of truth on this balsa number eight shad wrap let's put it in the tank keep our fingers crossed let's see if we get what we want brian Me? you do the honors uh -oh. come on <gasps> oh. Ah! Ah! look at it it's oh, oh god it's alive wait a minute there it is look at it 
It swims for itself. Oh my god, look at that. Folks at home, look! Look at her. <laughs> look at her, folks. Look. No strings attached. Look, at, I want to show you. No strings attached. Look at that. Look at this beauty. Look at this. Look at this. Folks at home, look at this! There you have it! It's exactly what we want. We work hard at this. <laughs> Anyone can do this in their very own shop, in your garage, in your barn, whatever you got. Neutral buoyancy shad wraps in the shop. Final touch, get your Sharpie, label it on there. I like to put the letter N for neutral buoyancy. I'm gonna write my N on there. There you have it. Folks at home in the shop, Brian DeCarpenter, what do you think? Nailed it, dude. Nailed it. Come on. Perfect. Let's go. Look at that. Just look at it.